now. Dr Fiona Martin is a Liberal MP and she joins me here at the desk. We are COVID safe, of course. Yes. It's been a brutal couple of weeks uh, for everyone that works at Parliament House. But do you feel like we're on the cusp of change here? And you're a bit of an outsider. You're new to Parliament, mm. relatively. Yeah. What are your observations? Yeah, I think we are on the cusp of change. We're certainly um, investing in changing the culture of Parliament House. And yes, as a, um, a new person to Parliament House, I didn't go through the staff uh, um, you know, uh, pathway. pathway, no. Um, so it's all very new for me. Uh, look, I think, you know, there are important things that we need to address. One of them is um, the workplace hours. We get in there very early and we're there to all hours of the evening. There are no breaks throughout the day. We don't go outside. Um, we also work intensively in a, what I would call a quite a stressful workplace environment. Um, I also think we need a, a universal code of conduct for all staffers and pay senators so that we're all on board, we all know what, you know, professional conduct is in the workplace and that's communicated throughout. I also think we need to um, look at setting up an independent entity to deal with grievances in the workplace in yeah. Parliament House. Yeah, Anne Webster raised this and she said basically it's an HR department within Parliament House which would be separate, which mm. is, I think, there's a similar idea. We see the Prime Minister try and reset. He's put a lot of... or well, He's got women at the forefront mm. to dealing with, I guess, what are seen as, as women's issues. Yeah. Do you have a problem with the structure? Do you think the structure can deliver? I'm not talking about Parliament House now, but all women. Mm. Well, there's certainly, you know, a broad spectrum of views within the party and I think that's great and I think we should encourage that. Mm. I think that we're moving towards, the, in, we're moving in the right direction and we're, we're at that cusp, as you said, um, of positive change for women in um, Parliament House. So I'm confident that we're, we're heading in the right direction. It's perhaps an unpopular point to make now, but are toxic women also the problem? I haven't come across that. I don't think that. I think that women are very supportive of each other in Parliament House, not just within the Liberal Party, but across um, party lines as well, and I think mm. that's really important. There's been some comments from Grace Tame overnight. She's a sexual abuse survivor, and she has problems with the appointment of Amanda Stoker. I just want to show you her comments. The new assistant minister for women supported a fake rape crisis tour aimed at falsifying all counts of sexual abuse on campuses across the nation. And this same new assistant minister supported a woman who was honoured last year at the Australia Day Honours a woman who gave a platform to the pedophile who abused me. Now, Grace Tame is talking about Amanda Stoker there. What do you make of her comments? Amanda Stoker is the new assistant minister for women. Yeah, so obviously Grace Tame, incredible woman, and I think she's um, a, a wonderful leader for young women and doing incredibly um, important work. Uh, I think uh, Minister Stoke is uh, facilitating a, um, a discussion um, in the past um, is something that, you know, um, is, is about a broad spectrum of views and she was, I think, discussing the issue broadly. Mm. Um, I don't think that that is in itself problematic because people are entitled to have their views and it's important that we have discussions um, about issues like this so that we can bring about positive change and certainly people's views can change over time, which is what we've seen with quotas. Have her views changed? I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't actually asked her. But what I found with um, Minister Stoker is that she's a professional woman who advocates for change um, to support women in the workplace. And I've only found her to be professional. OK, when you look at what she said in the past, she has also accused of accused some women of, of raising issues like this, of playing the gender card. What do you think of that? Well, I, I, I'm not privy to mm. the, the details, but I think that, you know, Minister Stoker has been quite supportive of her female colleagues yeah. um, and she's a great advocate, I think, for, for you know, us in Parliament. How so? Because her um, comments have seen, been seen at odds with um, people like Grace Tame and obviously Grace Tame is offended by that. Now, I'm not saying everyone has an unblemished record, mm. but 
Could there be a situation where Amanda Stoker in that role is actually counterproductive? Or what does she need to do from here? Well, she's part of a task force that the Prime Minister set up with Minister Payne, and that is built into Cabinet. And I think I commend um, Scott for setting that up. I think, you know, that was an incredibly um, positive move. Um, and he's appointed all these women into very important roles to address economic security, to address domestic violence, um, to address, you know, safety of women um, across the nation. And I think that's incredibly important. I think this team is going to work together to address these issues um, for our nation. And I think that, you know, with the oversight side of the Prime Minister and with uh, Minister Maurice Payne that we're going to see positive change occur. What do you say to sexual abuse survivors who could see Amanda Stoker's comments as undermining? That we're at a, an important point in our nation's history right now. We are talking about these issues in the public domain for the first time, I think, mm. um, and we are at the cusp of change. Um, there are women who are in Parliament are here for you, we're listening, um, and we want to change things so that you have, um, you know, the opportunity to um, express your concerns and, and they can be addressed. We're listening. OK, well, that's a very good message uh, indeed. Finally, you sit in a, a party room in Canberra with Andrew Lamming. That's going to continue. Are you comfortable with that? Well, it's now a police investigation, so I don't think it would be appropriate for me to comment on, on that matter. Um, he's been in Parliament for 17 years. Um, he's said that he's not going to contest the next election mm -hmm. and he's also said that he's going to seek help, which is probably most important. Empathy training, is that right? I'm not, de I'm not privy to the details of the help, but I understand that he's seeking help and that's very important. So you're OK with sitting in Whether he's sitting in Parliament House or outside Parliament House, what's important is that he's seeking help. He's shown no signals yet that he has no contrition. Do you hope that changes? Absolutely. OK. Fiona Martin, thanks so much. You're very welcome. Now the